The Conscious Lovers, a comedy in five acts, 1722, by Irish journalist, editor, and playwright Richard Steele follows an impoverished but courageous young woman who ends up with the man she loves, even as she is accused of being a prostitute. Steele was interested in using traditional comedic forms to instruct young people on proper moral conducts. The play was the last he completed and by far his most successful. It is a major work of what is called the Age of Sentimentality, 1700 to 1790, and was one of the most produced works during this period. Its themes include the rewards of obeying one's parents, the importance of virtuous behavior, the nobility of the working class, and the legitimacy of social structures like marriage. From the preface, Steele states that he wants to chasten wit and moralize the stage. The play opens in the house of Sir John Bevel, a well-respected and wealthy businessperson. His son, the junior Bevel, a young gentleman of some fortune, is talking with Humphrey, abbreviated as Humph. Bevel is engaged to Lucinda Sealand, however, he is really in love with Indiana Danvers. But at the request of the intimidating Mr. Sealand, as well as his own father Sir John Bevel, whom he respects to the end, he plans to go through with the marriage. The young Bevel would rather endure a lifetime of unhappiness than disappoint his father. But when Lucinda hears that young Bevel has been paying the upkeep for Indiana, some woman he met in France, Lucinda wants nothing to do with him. Indiana doesn't have the most noble lineage either, she's the daughter of an English merchant who mysteriously vanished on a trip to the East Indies. Lucinda refuses to marry any man who would keep another woman on the side. But it's also clear that Lucinda is really in love with Mr. Myrtle, young Bevel's good friend, and she may be looking for any reason to stop the marriage with young Bevel. Bevel, in an act of generosity, writes to her that she can divorce him at any point in the future, but that they should be married to please their parents for a little while. Lucinda reveals her suspicion that Bevel is keeping a mistress. She shows the letter he wrote to her as proof of his disloyalty. Her father, Mr. Sealand, is outraged and goes on a surveillance mission to discover if young Bevel is really paying for a woman. He agrees to break off the agreement. Lucinda then takes another suitor, Mr. Simberton, the wealthy aristocrat but extremely odd man who thinks of women like hunting trophies. The simple-minded Mrs. Sealand is okay with the marriage, but Lucinda Sealand isn't too thrilled about the prospect of Mr. Simberton. Back at the Bevel house, some servants of the young Bevel, Tom and Phyllis, offer the image of people with less moral fiber than Indiana, though they have the same good heart as most of the characters in The Conscious Lovers. Upon hearing that the possible marriage between Lucinda Sealand and the odd Mr. Simberton will go through, Tom and Mr. Myrtle decide to dress up as lawyers and somehow prevent the marriage license from being signed. Indiana maintains a residency in the heart of London, Charing Crossing. She lives with her kind but perpetually anxious aunt. The aunt reiterates her concern about Bevel, unless he plans on marrying her down the road, it appears very unsound for him to be paying for all her food and rent. People, the aunt suggests, will think that Indiana is a prostitute. Indiana passionately argues that the two don't have that kind of arrangement, and in the middle of this dispute Bevel Jr. appears at their house. The aunt exits to let the two talk in private, Indiana asks him why he keeps paying for all her bills. He claims that he does it because it makes him feel good, he refuses to elaborate. Indiana can't help but be wounded by this. She thought the two of them would have a good relationship in the future, despite him being engaged to Lucinda. But the young Bevel, thinking of his moral obligations, refuses to reveal his love. Meanwhile, Mr. Simberton discovers that his future bride will only inherit 50% of her father's fortune. This is unacceptable with his social climbing nature, and he abruptly breaks the engagement. Those who work to create their own fortune, then, or renew money, are the heroes of as the conscious lovers. Mr. Myrtle and the young Bevel have a misunderstanding. They threaten each other with a duel. They end up not going through with it, and Steele praises the decision of both men to back down from senseless mutual murder. Through a humorous incident involving a lost bracelet, Mr. Sealand realizes that Indiana is his estranged daughter. Everyone rejoices. He agrees that Bevel and Indiana would be a great match. Mr. Simberton is shown to be a rascal. Mrs. Sealand is relieved that he won't be marrying her daughter. Mr. Sealand pairs his daughter up with Mr. Myrtle, a coupling that both young people desired. Indiana and the young Bevel will also be happily wedded. 
Thus, everyone with good moral behavior is rewarded. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.